Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to my fall winter wonderland here in Northern Illinois. I'm Rita Hickman. I'm a body mind expert and I'm a women's business coach. And I'm able to combine the two, the Eastern medicine, the shamanic work, in order to help women really get their focus and their goals clear so that they can uh, move forward and really create either a healing practice or a coaching business. Hey, Lillian and Dina, nice to see you. Or a coaching business or something uh, that really fulfills them and moves them forward in life. So today we are talking about meta-listening. Now, yesterday I talked about two of my best coaching uh, tools, and one was checking your ego at the door and realizing that the people you're working with are equals and just as smart, if not smarter than you. And the second one was following your curiosity. Now, curiosity is a fun thing. It's, uh, it works best when it's intuitive. Hey, Krista. And it works best uh, intuitively when you are present and listening. You know, it's, it's funny because I'm considered a really great listener besides the fact that I talk so much <laughs> and do these, and do these uh, morning live streams. But I have a real trick. You know, I'm someone who loves to talk. I'm someone who loves to engage with people. But my trick for listening is this. I get as comfortable as possible. So when people come into my space, um, the first thing they do is they tend to take off their shoes and then we go on back and, uh, and we get a cup of tea and then we sit in these great wing chairs with this little fireplace going and it's just beautiful and cozy. And we're able to take a breath and get really present. So um, Krista says being present is hard to train your brain. And Krista, um, I know exactly what you're talking about. And so one of the ways I worked my ways around that to get really relaxed and comfortable and be present was to surround myself with all sorts of cues that help me be there. You know, like right now, I'm sitting on top of the heat register. It's one of my favorite places in the house, actually. And so I turn up the heat just a little bit so that I've got warm air <laughs> wafting on me while I'm talking. Because I'm comfortable, I'm able to be more present. And uh, because my environment is calming and soothing, I'm able to be more present. The more comfortable you can be, the deeper you can listen. Now, meta-listening is about listening not just to the words that people are saying. And have you ever been around people where um, someone else who've, they've only heard your words, but they missed all of the other cues. They missed tone of voice. They missed, um, inflection, they missed facial expressions, they missed body language, they missed the colors you wore for the day. They just blew right past it. Hey, Deb. And so they heard the words that you were saying, but they didn't hear them on a meta level. They weren't able to hook into what was going on inside of you. Now, in our crazy world, we've got so many distractions. We've got other people being angry, we can feel their energy, we've got the phone, we've got the television, we've got sound going on. And we do need a certain amount of that. Hey, Carrie, we need a certain amount in order to engage our frontal lobe and help get it out of the way so that we can listen on that bigger, deeper, more intuitive level, that meta level. So not only do I find a way to be comfortable, you know, my shoes off, I'm a good temperature, I've got my cup of tea, I'm in a great chair, it's just me and the other person. I give plenty of time of, and, and space. So it's not just that, but it's also, um, it's also about having enough going on that your mind can be a little bit distracted. Your mind, um, your frontal lobe is engaged with either music or a scent, something that gets it out of the way and keeps it occupied so you can listen on a much deeper level. When we listen with the frontal lobe, we tend to um, be constantly thinking about what we want to say or what we need to do or where we need to go. Hey, Joy, good to see you. Where our mind's constantly very busy. So we need an environment that supports a meta-listening sort of uh, frame of mind, which not only includes things which keep you comfortable and cozy, but also enough that keeps your frontal lobe out of the way so you can be really present. I listen most closely actually when I do body work and when nothing is being said. When I'm doing body work with people 
and, and we're not talking, I'm listening to the music and I'm feeling and having a felt sense of what's going on. And I do the same thing when I'm coaching people. It's about not just listening with your ears, but paying attention to what you feel inside of your body. Are you starting to feel anxious? Are you starting to feel defensive? Are you starting to feel joyful? Are you starting to feel um, you know, interested? All of that will reflect, hey Christine, all of that will reflect the person that you're with. Because if you're both comfortable, then you've got all of these little spidey senses going on. And that's listening on a meta level. It's when you are listening not just with your brain and the things that you need to do, but you're listening with everything that's going on inside of you. My real trick is if I pay attention to how I feel when I'm talking to someone, it will almost guarantee uh, that's what they are feeling. And so when I focus on my felt senses, instead of being out there, when I focus on what am I sensing, what am I feeling, what are the questions coming up in my mind, how am I curious, where does this go? While I'm in this really relaxed Zen space, that's when it goes from just having a conversation with somebody to something that's a much higher level where you hear them, where you validate them, where you can really understand where they're coming from. One of my gifts is uh, to take what people are, are thinking and feeling and to verbalize it for them. It's not necessarily, coaching isn't about giving advice and listening isn't about um, just being silent and being neutral. It's about feeling with every sense that you have, what your eyes are seeing, your ears, your, your taste, your felt sense in your fingers, your own emotions. That's meta listening, but you have to be in a comfortable space. You can't be distracted. You can't have a lot of things going on. It has to be a dedicated space to listen. And this works well if, if you're listening to your spouse or your child, hey, Natalie, Natalia, or somebody at work. When you have a dedicated space where you're listening, not just with your, your ears, but where you're listening with your own felt sense, then you will really understand what someone is going through and then you can support them through it. Most people come to coaching not because they don't have their answers, but because they need help achieving or clarifying what's going on way deep underneath the surface. And my job is to listen to them and help reflect back what I'm hearing on all of those different levels. So if you'd like to try listening on a meta level, here's my suggestion. First of all, I want you to get as comfortable as possible. I want you to get comfortable clothes. I want you to get warm socks. I want you to be a good temperature. I want you to have maybe your snacks around, whatever it may be. And then I want you to listen. You don't even have to listen to somebody else. You can be listening to your environment. And I want you to pay attention to all the different details that your, your mind is and your body is telling you about what's going on. And to make it a little bit extra, I want you to put something going on in the background, either a smell like an essential oil or a song you're familiar with. Um, I used to watch James Bond a lot when I needed to sleep because I was so familiar with every single line in all of the movies that it did just enough to occupy me so that I could be present at a deeper level. So put something on in the background that isn't distracting, you know, th that doesn't make you go, gee, what's that next word? That's really curious. That's really a great song. And more something where it keeps it occupied so that you can hear with your whole body. I used to do this class and the class was uh, called Touch and it was Touch Assist Compassionate Healing. And uh, one of the activities we would do is we, one person would lay down and the other person would sit next to them. And then they would just sit there and they would listen. And then maybe they might put their hands on different parts of the body. Maybe they would do that, maybe they wouldn't. But then after about five minutes, they would say to the other person who was laying down, you know what, these are the felt senses that I got. This is what I heard you know, from your body. These are the emotions that came up for me. These are the thoughts that came into my mind. Does any of that resonate with you? And nine times out of 10, the person who took the time to be comfortable and listened, even in silence, was able to be spot on with how the other person was feeling. 
and what they were reacting to. And many times they could even do, you know, read parts of their mind because they could feel the energy. I used to get myself into a lot of trouble because I was quite a lot because I was uh, anxious and nervous and, you know, and I didn't want to say anything or draw attention. And so I would listen, constantly be listening at a different level. You know, what's going on with that person? You know, when you walk in a room and uh, you can feel if people are angry or, or there's tension going on, this would be the same sort of thing. And because I was uncomfortable and I didn't realize I was listening, you know, really listening to what was going on, I would blurt out what was on my mind, you know, because I was so uncomfortable. I'd be like, yeah, I feel really uncomfortable right now. I'm really anxious. And then I'd make some weird joke about lice or, you know, something just to break the tension. And the person would inevitably say, yeah, that's exactly what was going on. And yesterday, you know, my daughter had a lice, you know, had a lice infestation. Hey, Joa. And it's still on my mind and I'm still worried about it. And I'd be like, oh, sorry for making a joke about that. <laughs> and I realized I needed to take that listening, that meta listening into a career. Because if I was always going to be blurting out what people were thinking, then um, I needed to, to make it into my life's, my life's work. And that's meta listening on that deeper level. Hey, Sandra Ann, it's when you, you shut down even sometimes your ears and you pay attention to what's going on inside of you. And nine times out of 10, if you're in a good, comfortable space, you will pick right up on what's going on with the other person. And you'll be able to articulate it and reflect it back. And then in a coaching relationship, someone will say, yeah, that's exactly what I was trying to say. That's exactly what I was thinking. Thank you. And it gives them the clarity and the understanding so that they can listen better to themselves too. So. Here's your homework assignment for today. I want you to find a space, let's say a space without anybody else, and I want you to get comfortable, and I want you to listen. Listen to everything that's going on inside of you. Listen to your thoughts with that little bit of detachment. Listen to your feelings and all those different layers. Listen to um, any, any things that you notice. Does your foot hurt? Does your head hurt? And by listening to you, it will give you a good gauge of what's going on around you, a very good gauge of what's going on around you. But you have to be comfortable and you have to not be, you know, thinking a million different things. So put those things in place. Make it a comfortable, wonderful space for you to dial down and be present and connect with something that's bigger than you, okay? So I want you to give that a try today or tomorrow. And when you do, send me a text. You know, put a little message here and let me know what you heard. Let me know what you found out. Because listening is one of the key cores to really helping somebody. Because if you can hear them, if you can hear what they're saying beyond their words, if you can, hey Patty, if you can look past what, what you know, what's coming out of their mouth to the person that's actually underneath them, you will be amazed and you will be well loved because most people have a mask going on. They've got a whole facade, you know, a whole way of interacting and reacting to the world that they've created in order to survive. But that's not all they are. That's just a small part of who they are. And when you look past the behavior to the person inside, that's where that intimacy and connection happens. I read a story the other day. Oh, actually it was probably a few weeks ago about an ER doctor. And the person who came in that he had to work with was somebody who was from the prison because he worked with prisoners a lot. And this person was so angry and so frustrated. And the doctor just sat there and was present. And then he was able to reflect back a little bit. Wow, it sounds like you're really angry. And that's what allowed those doors to open for the person to, to express themselves and the doctor to reflect back. Wow, it sounds like that really frustrates you. It sounds like it's, it's something that you're really working through. And when you're able to identify with someone and develop that rapport, then you t nine times out of 10, you're gonna be their friend for life because who does that? Who does that in this world? Nobody listens closely. So if you wanna be a superhero, really develop those listening skills, the, the listening even in the silence. I know a woman who reads tarot cards and she can read tarot cards that are blank. They're completely blank cards because she pays attention and listens to everything around her.
okay? So give it a shot, and I wanna know how it turns out. And if you found some value in this video, please put a comment or a little emoticon or something, and like, share, love, comment on other people's comments, because we're all in this together. Let's see, Christine says, getting quiet and staying quiet is one of the most t challenging things to teach clients. It really is. But a big piece of it is creating an environment outside of you that trains you and trains them. When we go into this space, this is what we're going to do. We're going to be quiet and we're going to listen to one another. And you do it with lighting, you do it with smells, you do it with color, you do it with comfort, you do it with temperature, all of those things. And when you bring them together, then we start to relax everything starts to quiet down and that's when we can have a real conversation. So there you go. If you feel stuck about anything or you want some help developing your coaching practice, give me a message. Um, I'm doing a survey right now where I'm checking in with women and seeing what their needs are because uh, I'm doing starting to do my coaching online and not just in person. So uh, I hope you have a great rest of your day and I will see you tomorrow. Bye!